And this is so fascinating because the loss of taste and smell has been one of the most perplexing, perplexing symptoms of COVID-19. Talk to us about exactly what you found. Yeah, it's super interesting. Um, and again, I'm really grateful to our customers because this is something where we asked our customers to participate in research You know, over a year ago. And we have over 80,000 customers who have had COVID and over a million people who have participated in the survey. And we were able to first find that blood type was associated with you know, susceptibility and severity. And it's been really confusing to understand like what exactly is happening with this loss of smell. But what we did find is that there's a genetic variant that does look like if you have this variant, you are 11 and a half times more likely to actually lose your sense of smell if you have COVID. And it is between two genes associated with you know, the ability to smell with olfactory. So it's a really important clue in being able to start to understand the biology of the disease. So that's why we're really excited so, about it. It's the first time we're finding something. Basically, you, you found that younger people are more likely to lose their sense of taste and smell. Also, women more likely to lose their sense of taste and smell if they get COVID. I mean, is there more that you could potentially unearth here? Could uh, genetics impact the severity of the disease, for example? Well, I think that's the beauty of research is, is that you're constantly asking questions and you're constantly learning. So the thing that we found right now is a really important first clue. And that is, is that there is a genetic association with why some people are more likely to lose their sense of smell. So that is a first clue. There was not more associated that we found yet with the women and with the age. While we see that with you know, loss of smell you know, occurring in different populations, we don't yet have a genetic reason why those populations are having more susceptibility. What we do find is about a third of Americans do have this genetic variant that would make them more likely to lose um, you know, their sense of smell if they had COVID. So it's the first in a, in a puzzle, like the beauty again of research is it's a complicated puzzle. So we'll keep discovering. And I think that's also one of the reasons why 23andMe keeps the research going and keeps engaging our customers because there's more to be found. So what other puzzle pieces are you looking at? What other possible genetic links to COVID are you researching? Well, I think personally, I think the thing that's most interesting is that, you know, on severity, it's one of the reasons why we had announced, um, you know, back almost a year ago that we were giving away free kits for anybody who had been hospitalized with COVID, because it's you have some of these, you know, um, extreme stories of people who, um, you know, you know, are in hospital for, you know, or, or you know, have the, the ultimate consequence of death, you know, so that they have the extreme response with COVID. I think the that's one area that we are still looking at. Second is we are starting to look at long COVID. So we all hear about these issues of people get COVID, but then they have you know, months and months or years of, 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 you know, of symptoms still. So we are now starting to look at that as well. So one thing that we will be doing in the coming months is actually starting to update also our COVID calculator. We did put this out um, for free to individuals, our COVID calculator. So that is something that we'll continue to update as we make more discoveries. Meantime, the FDA has approved this landmark Alzheimer drug by Biogen, the first new drug in decades. I'm curious what your reaction is to this and what the implications are for 23andMe. I know that you were looking into late onset Alzheimer's and genetic links there. Well, I think one thing that's really a passion for me is always looking at why some people respond to medications in one way or you know, positively, or why they do not respond. So this is a medication I have not looked at it in detail, but I would love to see, is there a genetic basis for response? Why some people might do better and some people might not. So I think that is a lot of the future of all therapeutics is that you really will start to stratify you know, people with conditions into knowing who's most likely to respond and who is not as likely to respond. Meantime, when it comes to COVID, we are in this sort of messy middle time. For example, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is saying that schools, uh, you don't have to wear masks in schools. At the same time, there's new research from Johns Hopkins saying that adolescents get, you know, very severe cases of COVID. Are you at all concerned about the, the sort of mixed messages in this uh, messy middle time when we don't know all of the science? 
It's a good question, Emily. Um, and I do have this luxury of living with my sister who's an epidemiologist. So we spend a fair amount of time thinking about this. I personally am, am of always of the mindset that caution um, makes sense. So that there's not necessarily, you know, we try to use reasonable caution. So, you know, we are more social these days. We do, my kids are back in school. Um, so, you know, we do see people, we go into town, but at the same time, in any time I'm in a, in a indoor place, I am wearing a mask. And I think that I personally feel like there's not necessarily the, the downside of being reasonably cautious at the same time, continuing to do things that make people feel healthy, like being outside and, and interacting with others. So I do think that there is a reasonable, um, you know, it's reasonable to keep being cautious and eyes wide open um, at the same time, take advantage of the warm weather and be outside. Now, we're all waiting for uh, the merger between 23andMe and, and, and the Virgin Atlantic SPAC. I know you can't talk about the details, but I know there's a shareholder vote happening this week. Since you can't talk about the details, what can you tell us about your outlook, the big vision for 23andMe, knowing that you are finding more timely and significant links between genetics and disease? Emily, I am... Um... I'm so excited about the potential because it, it is, it's some of the things we've talked about before, everything that's happened with COVID and people feeling comfortable with healthcare online. Um, the potential for data to transform healthcare is huge. And I remember so well in the late nineties when I was sitting on the investment side and I was looking at the internet being built and you saw like the, you know, people starting to come together online for the first time and how data was changing everything. And I said, it was like, it's like watching a desert, you know, become Las Vegas. And, and that's what's happening right now in healthcare, thanks to data. And when I think about what 23andMe really has, it's, we have this unbelievable connection with our customer. And we have spent 15 years now building out a partnership and trust and engaging them with genetic information, um, having them take surveys, being able to do research like COVID, like the opioid use study that we did last week as well, the depression study, like all these research studies that come out, giving them back to customers and being able to really engage people in their health. So I'm really enthused about the potential. Um, for me, this is a long-term journey as to where is data going to go with transforming all of healthcare. And I say all the time, what I am most excited about is really being able to use data to know how to live best so I can live best, you know, longest. So I want to be healthy at 100. And I do think that on our drug discovery side, 23andMe is using human genetic data to see if we can develop drugs faster and better. So you talk about, you know, Biogen and their Alzheimer's therapy, huge achievement. I want to be able to make the entire drug discovery process more efficient and faster so that more people are benefiting from the human genome.